All right, well, hello. Uh, thanks for watching. I just want to briefly go over this implementation of a custom clear button uh, for WebKit browsers only. So this isn't a good cross-browser solution or anything. It's just kind of a cool little demo. Um, so you're probably familiar with the default styling. When you start typing in a text area, you get this little X icon. I'm going to just zoom it in for your convenience. <laughs> Um, and it's the convenience method uh, or convenience icon really uh, you can click it and it deletes all your text um, so that's that's cool but you probably have wanted to style that button I mean you have a you have a UI for your whole app you probably want it to be somewhat consistent to your other icons so it'd be nice if you could have a custom icon like a trash can or Maybe you're just lazy and you just want to implement text. This big ugly delete thing with a yellow background. So all these are possible and all these are, are powered by CSS only. You don't need any JavaScript to get these working for WebKit only. Uh, so how would you go about doing this? It turns out to be fairly straightforward. Um, the key is to know this little selector here. Uh, it's dash WebKit search cancel button, some obscure thing. Uh, so there's all these obscure little uh, WebKit pseudo elements like this and if you do a search for this one you'll probably come across other sites that list more than just this so it's kind of handy you can play around um, set appearances of any element to any other element it's kind of fun to play around with <laughs> um, doesn't really work 100% all the time but here, here's one of them you can customize so we can target it and we could say WebKit appearance none all we're saying here is don't show this default X icon. So that's cool. I mean, we can turn it off if we don't like it, but really like we like the functionality, I think. We just want to change the appearance probably, right? So this is an, this is an example of how we do that. Unfortunately, we have to hook in and create generated content on the cancel button itself. Um, yeah, probably your first intuition would be to, you know, once you have a whole, and once you have this selector, you've grasped a hold of this element and you probably want to just stay like, okay, background image equals and then go about your thing. Unfortunately, that would be straightforward. That would make sense. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Not yet anyway. So, so unfortunately, to get your custom icon, you have to do a pseudo element on a pseudo element. So as I like to say, pseudo element inception. Bad joke, but yeah, it's inception. Exactly, it's just con generate content on top of a pseudo element. Uh, so, so you're probably familiar with this, maybe, maybe not. Um, so CSS generated content, just do a search on that and you can learn everything to know about that. Uh, there's another one that's, uh, that's before. This one we're just hooking into after. Um, and if you've ever used this before, you know that you have to say content equals empty string or else it won't show at all. And similarly, display block, we just want it to appear as a normal block level element. Uh, and then we set some uh, dimensions. These dimensions will also affect the positioning in the input text. So you, could, you probably have to nudge them a little to get them exactly correct how you're expecting them to be. Uh, this is different than the actual image dimensions. The image is set as a background image. So we're defining that here as a base64 encoded image. You can see that this X really compresses nicely. I use this tool called uh, Image Alpha uh, and also Image Optim. And it really compresses the heck out of these pings. This is a 30 by 30 ping of just an, this X icon. And you can see it's just, that's the entirety of the whole icon there. It's wrapping to the next line and it's only a few lines long. So, I mean, I've seen crazy CSS, cross-browser CSS declarations that are much larger and uglier than that. So in this case, it makes a lot of sense just to drop the base 64 encoded icon in there. Um, and then after that, nothing too fancy. We're just specifying how we want the image to appear, that background image to appear. So we say, we don't want it to repeat. I don't want multiple Xs. So we'll say, no repeat. <laughs> um, background size is 10 pixels. So yeah, the original is 30 by 30. We're downscaling it. So that's for high resolution screens like Retina or you know most Android phones. Most phones in general these days are actually uh, high resolution but now it's starting to be desktop of course we have the retina desktop displays so you're gonna have to get used to doing a technique like this <laughs> um, and this isn't the only way to do it but this is what I did here 
Uh, and then we have some basic positioning. This is actually the default position, I believe, for background images, so you can probably safely delete that. I left it in here for your convenience because I noticed when testing on iOS 6 that the image is actually down and to the right a little, which means you'll have to make it, you'll have to do an adjustment that puts it a little to the left and a little up. So you'd have to do something with background position or absolute positioning which I'll show in a couple seconds here actually. Um, so that's all that's going on there. Nothing really terribly fancy. That's the first example, this custom X icon. For the second one, this is the trash can. All that's different here are the dimensions and the base 64 encoded image itself, which is just as small actually for that whole icon, which is really nice. So you don't have to do any crazy CSS hacks. Just dump the binary data in there. Or the in this case the base 64 encoded data. So, yeah, I'm talking too fast, I think. <laughs> For the the, uh, the third and final custom example, I have no icon. I just have this generated content, this delete text, del, <laughs> and I have an ugly yellow background. And in this case, you can see I'm absolutely positioning it. Um, because that delete text is a little too big, it was overflowing by default, so I had to nudge it back into place. Uh, and to do this, you'll have to anchor it somewhere. Uh, if you if you just do this straight out, it'll actually be the position relative to the page body. So you have to put an anchor on some parent element. In this case, we're just putting an anchor position relative, which is the anchor. Uh, we're adding that to the input field itself. I believe the same effect can be achieved by just anchoring to this button itself. But either way, work either either way works, <laughs> either way uh, gets the intended effect and position. And once again, no JavaScript, and it's all functional, so pretty nifty. Yeah, that's about it then. So I hope you found that informative. I hope you could stand my annoying voice, and I hope it, you could make sense of it. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to just drop a comment on the blog. I'm I'm happy to answer it. There's the blog entry, so. Yeah, basically everything I just told you here um, in text if you want to read it. So yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching.